The weather is about to take a huge turn as we are anticipating even more big storms over the next seven days that could bring even more significant severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and the threat of tornadoes. Additionally, a strong cold front is about to push through millions across the United States, with temperatures dropping by as much as 10 to 20 degrees. And lastly, our next hurricane could be forming in the Caribbean Sea over the next few days, and this may impact the United States. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that will be impacting the United States over the next seven days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And we actually have two different storm systems in the United States right now, one of which is back over in New England. This is the remnants of what we just had with that severe weather event a few days ago in the Mississippi Valley. Overall, this thing's just moving out. We don't really have much else with it other than just some cold air on the back side of this low pressure system that is currently moving into New England and also the mid-Atlantic. We also have a big storm over Minnesota in North Dakota. This brought some snow flurries overnight to parts of North Dakota. It is now bringing some showers and isolated thunderstorms across the Great Lakes, and this will continue to push to the east today. Another thing I do want to point out is that the winds will be pretty high throughout the daytime today, anywhere in that black circle. And then on top of that, there will be some cold air on the back side of this low pressure system that is going to drop temperatures by as much as 10 to 20 degrees. Now, for the time being, it might look quiet across the Great Plains and also along the Gulf Coast, but I do not think that is going to last very long as our next big storm is going to come as early as Thursday. Now over the next few days our weather is going to take a huge turn as we are going to continue to see a very active weather pattern but our next storm systems could be the more significant storms that we've seen in quite some time. So let's talk more about this by looking at our mid-level flow and our jet stream. This is what it looks like right now. We got a low pressure system over the upper midwest. Very strong mid and upper level flow all across the Great Lakes and through the Ohio Valley. This is pushing tons of cold air out of Canada right now. So we're going to get a decent clip here of some cold weather for the next few days, anywhere from the northern plains back through New England. Over the next few days, things are going to change really relatively quickly. As we go into Thursday, a low pressure system is actually going to move from the Pacific Ocean into the four corner states. And I do think that this storm system will bring the return of some severe weather Thursday and Friday to parts of the central and southern plains. That is mainly because we're going to get a decent little moisture pull out of the Gulf. And then on top of that, southwesterly flow which helps to basically be able to crank supercells and in some cases can lead to tornadoes. And I do think that's in play Thursday night and into Friday. It's going to come down, to, though, to the timing of this trough and how quickly or how slowly it ejects over the Rocky Mountains here as we go into Thursday night. Eventually into Friday and Saturday, that low pressure system is going to gradually weaken, but I would anticipate at least some isolated severe weather, even Friday and Saturday, from the Mississippi Valley all the way through the Gulf Coast. I also think that we're going to see plenty of rainfall. It's going to be a pretty active period throughout the rest of this week and into the early weekend across the southern plains. Eventually by Sunday and Monday that low pressure system will really weaken as it moves off to the northeast in the direction of Wisconsin and then our next big storm system is going to be coming by as early as Monday or Tuesday. Might not look like much here on Monday but look at this by Monday evening. We have a very intense low pressure system forming right over Nebraska and Iowa with very strong southwesterly flow and southerly flow by as early as Monday evening and in in this case, with this particular setup, we could have a negatively tilted trough, which basically helps to be able to pull tons of moisture out of the Gulf, and on top of that, creates lots of wind shear. I do think Monday and Tuesday are two days we need to watch very closely for the possibility for severe weather outbreaks. I'm not saying that's definitely going to happen, especially since this is still about six to seven days from now, but I definitely think that's in play during the early portion of next week. And this has been consistent on the models over the last few days, that there will be some sort of storm system. The intent Density of it and how widespread the severe weather could be, though, are still uncertain. By Wednesday and Thursday of next week, the jet stream looks absolutely crazy on the GFS model. If this were to happen again, we'd be talking about the biggest storm of October without a doubt. And then eventually by next weekend, things become more uncertain. But I do think this active weather pattern is going nowhere. Now, let's put this all into more simplistic terms with the future radar. This is what it looks like today. We got a low pressure system right over the Great Lakes, some rain falling, a little bit of snow flurries even in northern Minnesota. Tonight and into early tomorrow, things are going to start to dry up for most of the lower 48. On Wednesday night into early Thursday, this will be basically the quietest period, I think, for the next seven days or so across the entire country. Notice how there's very little green or really any colors on the map here. That basically means it's going to be quiet. There's not really much happening Wednesday into early Thursday. It does change as we go into Thursday night as a low pressure system will begin to intensify in the southern plains. There is a possibility for at least some isolated severe weather Thursday evening. I think that'll be primarily focused 
in the Texas and Oklahoma panhandles. May see some severe weather linger, though, a little bit further to the east during the overnight hours. Friday is another day I'd be watching for some severe weather. Overall, does not look overly organized here. This is one of the biggest things with Thursday and Friday is that the trough intensity does not look very impressive. The moisture pull is going to be relatively weak with this setup. I do not think we're going to be talking about any sort of outbreak here, but I do think at least the threat for some damaging winds, isolated hail, and possibly a couple of tornadoes are on the table. It's going to come down, though, to moisture pull and trough timing. Right now, at least on the last couple of model runs here, it does not look nearly as impressive of a storm system. Nonetheless, definitely something I'd still be watching for, as it's going to be a pretty active weekend across areas like Texas and Oklahoma, with plenty of showers and thunderstorms, and multiple rounds are going to come out of this. As we go to late Saturday and early Sunday, we'll see some more showers across the Mississippi Valley, perhaps some isolated severe weather. I think Sunday night and early Monday is fairly quiet for most of the lower 48, but notice how a very intense low pressure system will eject right over Colorado and Wyoming. That's right over the mountainous regions. That's going to create some turbulent mixing, which means warm and cold air is going to be mixing all together here in the central plains, and this is going to create a pretty intense storm system, I think, on Monday. Notice how tight these isobars are, too. That is a tight pressure gradient. What that basically means is that we have very high winds that are going to be impacting a lot of the Midwest and all the way through the central plains on Monday. So a very windy day is likely on Monday. On top of that, we're going to have a very intense storm system moving right across the Midwest, and we are probably going to see at least some significant severe weather Monday as long as no major changes to the forecast happen. So I would definitely be keeping an eye on Monday and Tuesday of next week if you have any sort of interest of doing outdoor activities or really anything at all across the Great Plains, the Ohio Valley, and even into the mid-Mississippi Valley because we could have a pretty intense storm system Monday, may even see some more severe weather Tuesday across parts of the Ohio Valley, and then by Wednesday and Thursday, the storm system would be impacting the East Coast. So overall, next week could be a pretty big week as well. It's a little too early to go into specific details, but at least the broad overview is that a fairly impactful storm system is likely early next week. And here comes the cold weather. We got a big shot of cold air coming right through the Midwest and the Ohio Valley tonight and into early tomorrow, with some areas dropping by as much as 10 to 20 degrees below zero. So it's going to get pretty cold out there tonight and into early tomorrow. Wednesday and Thursday is going to be basically the same story. Almost the entire Midwest, Ohio Valley, and Northeast will be draped with temperatures below average. Above average temperatures will return to the Rockies and all the way through Texas on Thursday and then Friday and Saturday. That cold air will be mainly in the Northeast. Very warm weather returns by Sunday and Monday across the entire Great Plains and the Midwest. Could even have some isolated areas of record-breaking high temperatures. And then as we go into the middle of next week, things become more uncertain. But if we do have a pretty intense storm system next week, I would definitely anticipate some really cold weather on the back side of that, perhaps even colder than what we're dealing with over the next few days in areas like the Midwest and the Ohio Valley. And something else that we have to watch very closely is the tropics. We have a high chance of tropical development in the Caribbean Sea really over the next 24 hours. This is already with winds upwards of 45 miles per hour. It just lacks a well-defined center, which basically means this is not a tropical storm yet, but it will probably be a tropical storm later today once it becomes better organized. Over the next few days, there's a few things that could happen, but I do think it's going to kind of linger just to the south of Haiti and also the Dominican Republic for at least the next couple of days. And then from there, there's a couple of scenarios that could evolve, one of which is a more slowly progressing storm system that actually tracks more to the west, perhaps towards areas like Cuba or even up towards Florida. Those are two things that are definitely in play. The odds of either of these scenarios happening are about 30 percent that's actually increased since yesterday and I'll show you why in a second and then the other scenario is that it takes a more sharp turn off to the northeast well before it ever gets up that direction that would be going over areas like Haiti and the Dominican Republic which would be about a 65 percent chance or so right now overall the other scenarios like going more towards Central America or even going towards the western Gulf which was really never a scenario are basically zero percent at this point it's going to come down really to a cutoff low that is going to try to make its way down towards the Gulf Coast early next week as we kind of alluded to so that is something we'll have to keep an eye on. But no matter what happens here, this is definitely a storm that we need to keep a very close eye on for anybody in the greater Antilles and perhaps even Florida. And so looking at our spaghetti models, this is the GFS ensemble members, basically a group of different models all into one graphic that show you different scenarios of where this tropical system could go. Notice how it's going to be slowly intensifying throughout the next few days by Saturday into Sunday. That is when it could go two different directions, one of which is more off to the northeast in the direction of Haiti or Cuba. And then another scenario which is really starting to pop off here in the GFS ensemble group is actually being more stationary in the Central Caribbean Sea by around Sunday and then by Monday into Tuesday
Wednesday. That is when it will eventually turn somewhere. It's going to eventually have to go north or northeast. And a lot of these scenarios are way closer to Florida than what we were seeing only 24 hours ago. So this is definitely a noticeable trend. Wouldn't say that we're definitely going to see big impacts in Florida right now, because notice how most of the centers here are still well to the southeast of Florida. But obviously, if this were to get any closer, we could see some impacts in Florida, perhaps even big impacts. There are a couple other scenarios, too, where it kind of takes it much slower and way more off to the north and northwest by around Wednesday of next week in the direction of Florida. Now, keep in mind, any of this happening going in the direction of Florida or any sort of impacts to Florida, if we were to see this go that far to the northwest, would not be for at least another seven days or so. So no concern imminently, but this is something we're keeping a very close eye on. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. Our next video will likely be tomorrow or Thursday, so click the bell icon so you're notified with the latest updates, and we'll see you all again in the next forecast.